there is help. That's beautiful. That's great. Um, it's we don't want any of anybody that served to be forgotten, to think that they're they don't count anymore, to think that they're not important, to think that there's no one to talk to, to think that they're the only one with this kind of problem. And and a veteran talking to another veteran, again, whether it's VFW, American Legion, uh, a whole re DAV, those kinds of organizations all have interest in, how can we help you? Typically, the first question is, how can I help you? Now, here's an interesting point that I would make, and, and you just, I think, underlined it. If you reach out to a veteran and you offer that help and assistance as an individual or as a veteran yourself, what happens is that it, in fact, comes back to you tenfold. So when you were going through your grieving process with your mother, and after that had transitioned a bit, not over, but a, a bit, and you started then helping other people, what it did was it took you out of that immediate, this is all my pain, and nobody else has, has the experience that I do. When you start seeing Mr. Jones or Mrs. Smith, uh, and yeah. you discuss some of your experience with them, and, and you relate to them your things that you, the tools that you used, by you being able to help somebody else, it lessened your own grief. It's true. Didn't, That's actually a really put it good away. point. Yeah. Didn't put it away. It allowed you to help somebody else that you knew exactly what they were going through. So there's so many veterans organizations, and particularly that, you know, here in the state, the state of New Mexico, uh, uh, we have a tremendous amount of patriotism in the state. We are one of the, the top two or three states on a per capita basis that has, has more veterans hmm. per population than any other state. Even though we're relatively small in population, we have a high percentage. That's how we have to look at it. So New Mexico has a strong, strong affinity for veterans and people that have served. Um, New Mexico is one of the few states that flies, for instance, uh, a very visible uh, example, over all the state buildings, you'll see that black and white POW MIA flight. Right. And that was started in you know, 30, 40 years ago because they were concerned with. Now, New Mexico has the Bataan building, where the New Mexico is named after a small place in the Philippines. Right. And when a group of servicemen from New Mexico served in, Viet in, in the Philippines during World War II, they were part of the Bataan Death March when the Japanese took them prisoner. It was a 90-mile hike, and not everybody made it. And so there's a very high awareness of service to country, regardless of what you're asked to do. Uh, in this state, uh, it's, it's not unusual for veterans to be um, very much uh, acknowledged in this state. What I want to get out in this program is that there are a lot of services available, and if you ask for it, you'll get it. If you reach out, if you make the phone call, if your wife or your spouse makes a phone call and says, I think my brother, I think my uncle, I think my father could use some of your services, these services are free. You've already paid for them. These services are free. Pick up the phone, call the number for either the federal government, for the VA, or call the state of New Mexico. We're going to have those numbers for you. It's a free phone call, and the services are free, and it can benefit so many people. Now, from the state level, there are a number of benefits that if you, quote, don't need other services, there are some educational benefits. There are property tax benefits. There are license plate benefits. There are state park benefits. As a, uh, a veteran, you, these are entitlements. They're available for free. It's not a cost program. It's not send me your money. 
You've already done that. You've sent me your time. You've sent the government your time. It's a great interview. So I really appreciate this, Chuck. It's a subject that I feel more passionately about every day, and I know as more people are coming home from the war, as all the people are coming home from the war, hopefully within almost about 16 months now, 18 months, two years, just bring them all home, and, and we're here to help you out. So, again, thank you. It was a pleasure doing this interview. Is there anything you'd like to say to end the... Now, I just, I would tell any veteran right now, from the bottom of my heart, Welcome home. Welcome home. And have a great evening. Thank you. So thank you, Chuck and Mitch, for all of that wonderful information. Please, folks, as you heard it over and over again, take that information. Ask for help. Go get what you need. Yeah. I just want to say uh, something here, Mitch, um, about gratitude. And I am so absolutely thankful for every single person who has served in any conflict, who has served to um, go do the job that they signed up to do, and people come home injured. Um, sometimes the injuries are on the outside. Sometimes they're only on the inside. I've personally worked with vets um, in my own private practice with, with um, emotional injuries as well as physical injuries. And I don't care what your politics are. I don't care if you agree with conflicts, if you don't agree with conflicts. The fact is, the way I see it, is these men and women are coming home and they deserve our praise. They deserve our help. They deserve anything that they can get to help them reintegrate and to feel whole and connected again. And, connected. and I thank every single one of you for doing that. I'm glad you brought that up, Brandy, because this isn't about left or right. It's not about politics. This is about humanity and human, human condition and appreciation. So, great. Excellent. Thank you for saying that. And, you know, since we're on the, the subject of appreciation, there's something that I'm so passionate about, and, I, in fact, it's the reason I breathe air in this life, <laughs> is forgiveness. And um, I've been working on it my whole life. It's just, you know, I really believe in forgiveness. I believe that it's just the most liberating experience that I personally can have to forgive myself and to forgive other people. It's just about letting go and forgetting and, and moving on with my life. And it's so healing for me. And I read, I was listening to the, on TV the other day and the 60, CBS 60 Minutes came up with this great story about forgiveness. And it's kind of an intense story, but... It's just amazing. And the two people, I actually saw the two people talking to each other and doing an interview. And it's called An Unlikely Friendship. And this article is from March 9th, so just uh, last week. And it's oh, a uh, it's, few weeks ago. Uh, a few now. weeks ago now, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a woman named Jennifer Thompson identified a gentleman named Ronald Cotton as her rapist in 1984. And she was totally sure she found the right man. I went and I read a little bit about this online. In uh -huh. fact, she was so sure she found the right man. He got convicted, and it was done by identification. And she drew him and identified him. And once she drew him, she said that was the picture that got embedded in her mind. So it didn't necessarily mean it was really him, but that was the picture. So they mm -hmm. matched the picture to him. Years down the road... Um, Ronald Cotton in prison actually found the man who was her rapist because he was innocent and he got convicted so he spent 11 years in prison and during that 11 years he found the man I mean talk about a coincidence in a small world he uh -huh. actually connected with the man who was the rapist and it, it sort of came up he, the guy never really admitted it but he kind of had an idea so the two of them went up for parole and she did she had an, a, a, an opportunity to do another lineup Mm -hmm. And she was actually, it was interesting to hear her talk about this. She was so committed to her decision that she made. Mm -hmm. In fact, she was said she was insulted that they would even question her original decision. Mm -hmm. So when they gave her the lineup, she said, that's him. I told you, that's the guy. She didn't even, it wasn't even open for negotiation or didn't even really take a look at the other guy, which I thought was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, down the road, 11 years later, DNA evidence comes up, and they find out that Ronald Cotton is innocent, and he gets out, and she's And so just, was, it, was it the other guy he it, identified It turned out prison? it was the other guy that, um, that he had found in prison that she saw and said, no way. And uh -huh. so, what, yeah, isn't that a crazy little three-way three kind of thing? It was mm -hmm. really interesting that how they all met. But So he was released with the DNA testing, and it says, where do, it says that 
she she said when she found out that he was released, um, she had suffocating and debilitating shame. I mean, you can only imagine this guy spent 11 years in prison because of her decision. Mm-hmm. She said, I started to cry immediately, and I looked at him, and I said, Ron, they actually met. She called him and said, I need to see you, I need to talk to you. And he's uh-huh. like, sure, uh-huh. let's meet, which, I, I mean, I just couldn't even believe this whole story from beginning to end.